morning everyone, it's Paul here from Unusual Things. Now today, I am in Western Supermare at the crematorium um, and we've come to see the final memorial plaque of Jill Dando, who was a TV presenter that was murdered. I'll tell you a little bit more information about that very soon. Now, of course, today's one is a crime file one. Um, on the crime files, obviously, usually there's a crime related involved. So I tell you some information about that and then obviously visit the fernal resting place. Uh, don't forget if you like the video at all today, please give it a thumbs up. Now I'm going to have to be very quick because I've got into the, the crematorium. It's 8am, usually services start about 9. So I'm going to tell you all the information about what's going on. It's a beautiful place here. The sun's coming up on this early September morning and we'll try and find the final resting place of Jill Dando. Jill Wendy Dando, 9th of November 1961 to the 26th of April 1999, was an English journalist, television presenter and newsreader. She spent most of her career at the BBC and was the Corporation's Personality of the Year in 1997. At the time of her death, her television work included co-presenting the BBC One programme Crime Watch with Nick Ross. Jill Wendy Dando was born at Ashcombe House Maternity Home in Western Supermare, Somerset. She was the daughter of Jack Dando and Winifred Mary Jean Hockey, who died of leukaemia aged 57. Her only sibling, brother Nigel, born in 1952, worked as a journalist for BBC Radio Bristol before retiring in 2017, having previously worked as a journalist in local newspapers since the 1970s. Dando's first job was a trainee reporter for the local weekly newspaper, The Western Mercury, where her father and brother had worked. After five years as a print journalist, she started to work for the BBC, becoming a newsreader for BBC Radio Devon in 1985. That year she transferred to BBC Southwest, where she presented a regional news magazine programme, Spotlight Southwest. In 1987 she worked for Television Southwest, then BBC Spotlight in Plymouth. In early 1988, Dando moved from regional to national television in London to present BBC Television News, specifically the short on the hour bulletins that aired on both BBC One and BBC Two from 1986 until the mid 90s. From 1989 to 1996, Dando dated BBC executive Bob Wheaton. She then had a brief relationship with National Park Warden Simon Basil. In December 1997, Dando met gynaecologist Alan Farvin on a blind date set up by a mutual friend. Farving was separated from his wife at the time. A couple of months after Farving's divorce was finalised, the couple announced that they were engaged on the 31st of January 1999. Their wedding was set to take place on the 25th of September. On the morning of the 26th of April 1999, 37-year-old Dando left Farving's home in Chiswick. She returned alone by car to the house she owned in Fulham. She had lived in the house, but by April 1999 was in the process of selling it and did not visit it frequently. As Dando reached her front door at about 11.32, she was shot once in the head. Her body was discovered about 14 minutes later by neighbour Helen Dogel. Police were called at 11.47. Dando was taken to the nearby Charing Cross Hospital where she was declared dead on arrival at 13.03. As Dando was about to put her keys in the lock to open the front door of her home in Fulham, she was grabbed from behind. With his right arm, the assailant held her and forced her to the ground so that her face was almost touching the tiled step of the pool. Then with his left hand, he fired a single shot at her left temple killing her instantly. The bullet entered her head just above the ear parallel to the ground and came out to the right side of her head. Bob Wolfenden, The Guardian, July 2002. Forensic study indicated that Dando had been shot by a bullet from a 9mm short calibre semi-automatic pistol, with the gun pressed against her head at the moment of the shot. The cartridge appeared to have been subject to workshop modification, possibly to reduce its charge. Richard Hughes, her next door neighbour, heard a scream from Dando. I thought it was someone surprising somebody, but heard no gunshot. Hughes looked out of his front window and while not realising what had happened, made the only certain sighting of the killer. A six foot tall white man aged around 40, walking away from Dando's house. 
After the murder, there was an intense media coverage and investigation by the Metropolitan Police named Operation Oxborough proved fruitless for over a year. Dando's status as a well-known public figure had brought her into contact with thousands of people and she was known to millions. There was a huge speculation regarding the motive for her murder. Within six months, the murder investigation team had spoken to more than 2,500 people and taken more than 1,000 statements. With little progress, after a year, the police concentrated their attention on Barry George, who lived about half a mile from Dando's house. He had a history of stalking women, sexual offences and other antisocial and attention-seeking behaviour. George was put under surveillance, arrested on the 25th of May 2000 and charged with Dando's murder on the 28th of May. George was tried at the Old Bailey, convicted and on the 2nd of July 2001 was sentenced to life imprisonment. Concern about this conviction was widespread on the basis that the case against George appeared thin. Two appeals were unsuccessful, but after discredited forensics evidence was excluded from the prosecution's case, George's third appeal succeeded in November 2007. The original conviction was quashed and a second trial lasting eight weeks ended in George's acquittal on the 1st of August 2008. After George's acquittal, some newspapers published articles which appeared to suggest that he was guilty of the Dando murder and other offences against women. In December 2009, George accepted substantial damages from newsgroup newspapers over articles in The Sun and the News of the World following a libel action in the High Court. The original police investigation had explored the possibility of a contract killing, but since Dando was living with her fiancé and was only rarely visiting her Fulham residence, it was considered unlikely that a professional assassin would have been sufficiently well informed about Dando's movements to have known what time she was going to be there. CCT evidence of Dando's last journey, mainly security video recordings from shopping centre in Hammersmith, which she visited on her way to Fulham, did not show any sign of her being followed. On the night of her death, Dando's BBC colleague Nick Ross said on Newsnight that Retaliatory attacks by criminals against police, lawyers and judges were almost unknown in the UK. Forensic examination of the cartridge case, case and bullet recovered from the scene of the attack suggested that the weapon used had been the result of a workshop conversion of a replica or decommissioned gun. It was argued that a professional assassin would not use such a poor quality weapon. The police therefore soon began to favour the idea that the killing had been carried out by a crazed individual acting on an opportunist basis. This assumed profile of the perpetrator led to the focus on George. Cold case reviews by the police after 2008 concluded that Dando was killed by a professional assassin in a hard contact execution. Pressing the gun against her head would have acted as a suppressor muffling the sound of the shot and preventing the killer from being splattered with blood. In 2012, a cold case review named Serbian warlord Arkan as a suspect, although by this time he had died. In early 1999, the UK and NATO were involved in the Kosovo war opposing Serbia. Immediately after the Dando killing, a number of telephone calls were made to the BBC and other media outlets claiming responsibility for the killing on behalf of Serb groups. These calls stated that the murder was revenge for the NATO bombing campaign in Serbia and threatened further killings. In 2019, it was reported that the British National Criminal Intelligence Services, NCIS, had given an intelligence report to the Dando murder inquiry, claiming that the murder was in retaliation for the RTS bombing and Arkan had ordered the killing. The report highlighted a possible connection between the bullet used to kill Dando and bullets used in assassinations in Germany, namely handmade markings found on them. So there's all the information there on Jill Dando. What a sad, sad um, ending to such a promising life really. Um, doing so well in the career, obviously found love, was happy. Um, and then possibly, we don't know, but possibly due to some sort of political reasoning, um, her life has ended. No one knows, no one knows for sure. Anyway, I think I found it. Let's 
that's Jill's mum, Jean Dando, 1928 to 1986. You are truly wonderful, now so sadly missed. Rest in peace, sweetheart. And then of course, Jill Dando, 1961 to 1999. Your beautiful smile, that unaffected elegance, a genuine star, we love you. So there we have the final resting place of Jill Dando. Um, such a shame really, because like I said earlier on, she had such a promising career, was doing really well, found love, was due to get married. And then through whatever reason, you know, bless her, she, she's murdered. It's horrible. So bless you, Jill. And, um, thank you for what you stood up for because you know presenting things like crime watch where she's going on television with nick ross and putting herself out there and um you know just putting herself in a really vulnerable position really where you're open up to criminals watching and you don't know who's masterminding what you know when she's saying things you don't know um are people getting irate over that it's just hard to tell but yeah, such a sad, sad ending really. And Jill's dad is over here, so I'll show you his grave as well. So yeah, so that's um, Jill and those final resting place. Like I said, her dad's a bit further down here because when I was looking for Jill, I spotted her dad's first and I thought, she has to be nearby. Now someone on the Find a Grave website decided to mark her over there somewhere which is fair enough um so you know as always if you if you're one of those people that like to go out and look for um certain graves don't always trust <laughs> what you see on the internet and so forth because people will put other things on there to mislay uh, to sorry to mislead you into looking completely other directions but um been doing this a bit too long now don't always fall for that anyway let's have a look for uh Jack Dando's grave. So this is Jack Dando, who's Jill's dad. In loving memory, Jack Dando, 1918-2009, devoted husband and father, sadly missed by all who knew him. And Jill's is just up along there. So there we have it, guys. Uh, Jill Dando and her mum there. A dad Jack there um, and how horrible must that have been for him as a parent for his daughter to be assassinated really you know we can't imagine it can we anyway from Western Supermare don't forget leave your comments down below as well um, you know were you an avid fan of Prime Watch did you like Jill's presenting skills? Was she a local newsreader to where you lived? Uh, leave your comments down below and give it a thumbs up if you like. And I'll see you all on the next one. Take it easy.